Oh, so everybody heard that part. Hello, everybody. <laughs> live. We're live. So keep it. We've got a new cameraman. You're fine. We do. We've got Jacob, the birthday boy, yesterday. He's happy birthday, they say. So he's uh, recording, so bear with us. He's learning the ropes here. Shizuka's out doing a, a boat farmer's market style thing for the pet store. I don't know. But we're here. We've got fish and chips. We're ready to go. I've got the oil. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. I've got the oil coming up. Come closer. I've got the oil coming up to temperature. You can see we're monitoring the temperature right here. I'm taking it to about 300, the uh, first initial stage. I'm going to cut it down a little bit because it's going to get there pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to par cook the potatoes first. Par cook. So we're going to cook them twice. That's the fancy way of saying it. So it's kind of like when we're making our green vegetables. I like to cook them first, get that green vibrance, get most of the cooking out of the way, then ice bath it really quickly. So you keep that green color, and then we're going to cook it one more time. Awesome. So it's kind of the same with the potatoes, right? So I first, let's go ahead and cut some potatoes. I get to use this handy-dandy mandolin. Come closer. We get to use this handy dandy mandolin. And uh, it's really helpful for cutting certain things like French fries or thin chips or thin vegetables. So I'm going to pull it out and we're going to use it. Russet potatoes, always uh, the favorite for a good potato. I leave the skins on. I washed them really good beforehand. Okay. When you're using these mandolins, it's like a bunch of really sharp knives. So just be very, very careful. Use the guard if you have one. I recommend it strongly. Otherwise, it's very terrifying. Okay. So we are going to slice a potato. It's pretty simple. It keeps it nice and uniform. And when you get down to the end, it really protects your little digits there. So keeps them strong and intact. All right, let me move that to the side real quick. So what I did was I sliced some ahead of time. And I like to keep the potatoes in cold ice water or just cold water, maybe in the fridge or something. Uh, about 30 minutes, if you can, if overnight is good too. Uh, it just helps reduce the starchiness of it and gives you a really, really crispy golden French fry. Again, not mandatory by any means. But it but does the, make uh, a just big a, difference, right, if you do the overnight and remove that starch, right? Yeah, I mean, it does make a difference. It's going to make a nice crispy golden French fry versus something, you know, so soggy and quick to, you know, get all limp on us. But um Again, it's not mandatory, you know, time constraints. I understand them, but this is a perfect world, right? So I soak some ahead of time. And I mean, I'm doing exactly what I just told you guys. So these have been soaked, but the ones I just printed obviously are not soaked, but we're just pretending. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain these off really well. Okay, we don't want the water, oil and water do not mix. We all learned that at some point in school. I'm sure, fire safety class. All right, I'm even going to pat them dry pretty good here because we don't want a lot of excess oil, uh, water in there. So a nice clean towel, dump it on there. Get them nice and dried off as best as you can. So like I said, I'm going to lower this. This temperature is close to 300 right now. I'm going to cook them in there for about five to six minutes. Let's go ahead and dump some in. And I'll show you. I actually did this a little bit ahead of time too, but we're going to dump some in for the sake of showing you guys. Be careful. It's dangerous. It's hot, Earl. I like saying Earl, by say? the way. I was going to say, what <laughs> did you just say? <laughs> yeah, Earl, uh, don't overcrowd the pan. That's enough. You still want to have the fries able to move around a little bit in there. So about five to six minutes. Let them cook at around 300 degree temperature. Stay right there. I'm going to show you. So again, I like to do this a little bit ahead of time if I can, because I want them to come out of that oil and then relax a little bit over here relax a little bit after so we're getting like a, a pale white you know all the cooking is almost done inside there as you can tell by the picture and these are nice and cool in temperature and then we're going to put them back in a 375 degree oil and that's when we get a really really nice crispy french fry so as simple as french fries sound there's always a good way to make it more difficult than time consuming I think this, but you get a, this could be the start of jacob's like career here i just realized this is this is Jacob's video career, right? This it, is the beginning. I mean, he could be like famous one day and this yeah. could be the start. 
you could be thanking me on stage at college. Like, I remember that one day I got to video my dad yeah. cooking French fries. Yeah. For, like, <laughs> winning an Academy Award for his videography. Exactly, exactly. This is where it all began. Jacob. This is it. Starting on Cooking yeah. With Your Agent. <laughs> it, it's, everybody's in on the ground level right now. That's right. All right. So come over here. We're going to, while this is frying, I'm going to let it go. I'm watching the timer. I've got about four minutes left on it. I'm going to start the batter. Okay. So we're making a batter for the fish, fish and chips. Chips are French fries, obviously. Oh, I have it already. So we're going to do about one cup of all purpose flour. This is just for the batter. We're going to use a little bit extra flour for dredging. Dredging is, uh, you know, dipping the flour or dipping the fish in the flour. So about one cup of that. We've got baking powder. I actually had baking powder in the house, but it's been probably a few months and I don't really know how old it was. So I always recommend if you're like really wanting a great performance when you're cooking, just go get fresh with the baking powder and baking soda because it, you know, it can go bad on you. Um, so just for assurance that you, you get that crispy texture that we're looking for. So I'm going to do about a teaspoon. Did you see these new handy dandy measuring spoons? Look at that. We're actually getting professional over here. All right, so a teaspoon that's of that really, stuff. Uh, that's really fancy. That's really cool. I know. I like it. Well, no more uh, just winging it yeah. with the one that we have. <laughs> uh, teaspoon of salt. Again, I'm measuring just to measure. Normally, I wouldn't measure, but I'm trying to be a little more accurate on it for everybody's sake. Now, I like to add garlic powder, onion powder. It's not necessary, but again, it's seasoning. It's flavor. You're going to find some people that don't like it. I like it. The most important things here are the salt, the flour, and the baking powder, and then the, the uh, liquid. The other stuff is seasoning. If you want to put like a chili powder in there, maybe a cumin or some other great seasoning that you like, that's a great opportunity to do that too. That's how yeah, you get some really good flour a, in there. What a cool idea, yeah. All right, so let me just make room here. Stay right here. Go show the bowl there, Mr. Jacob. And just hang out. You can... I'm just uh, moving, making room on the plate of potatoes because I'm going to pull these other guys out here. So, again, a nice little strainer, right? Something to help metal. Obviously, don't do plastic, please. We're just going to pull these out. And it's like, again, so we're looking for that white, pale, not brown color. You know, they're going to be soft when they're cooled off. And this is what's going to help us get that really nice, crispy French fry later on. All right, so those are to the side, so we know which ones are which. I'm going to crank the oil up so we can get to about 375 is what I'm looking for. If you got a candy thermometer, use that. This is just a, a digital thermometer I use for my barbecue, and it works pretty good. How's the, how's the camera angle? It looks pretty good. Good job. Stay there. He's totally crushing it. Keep it up. All right, good job. All right, so we've got our dry mixture. I'm just going to whisk this together just to incorporate it before we add the liquid. Okay, so one of the key ingredients here, or a couple key things here, is for the liquid. So we're going with a beer battered. You can stay there, Jake. Beer is definitely going to help with the flavor of it, but what we're really looking for is that carbonation as well, right? So that's going to give us that crispy texture on the batter. So if you want to use a sparkling water, you're more than welcome to. You're going to cook the alcohol off, but if you just don't want to use beer, use a sparkling water, okay? And one thing I did, which I don't, you guys why, didn't see, just, is... Just real quick again, the sparkling water. Why was that sparkling? Well, we just want the carbonation. Right. So the, I would prefer a beer with carbonation for flavor, right? Because right? that's added flavor. But if you just don't want to use beer, we still need that carbonation. So use a sparkling water or something to get that's that carbonation like light, in there. fluffy... Right. Ready? It's going to give us that nice, crispy, fluffy yeah, batter yeah. that we're looking for in a good fish and awesome. chips. Okay. Um, so one other thing I did is keeping it cold is very, very important, right? We don't want to leave this sitting around. So I actually put this in the freezer for about 30 minutes before. Uh, this way it's as cold as we can keep it. We're going to do about a cup and a quarter. Oh, darn. There's going to be some left in the can. I guess somebody will have to have that later. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to mix this in. Yeah. Oh, darn. So the other tip mix is to make sure it's a beer that you like if you're using beer. Exactly. You don't want anything to go to waste. That's right. All right. So we are getting this. Be watch your arm. Are you getting hot? Okay. So we're just going to mix this in. You can see those 
the foam there, those bubbles, that's that carbonation. We're interact, uh, it's acting with the baking powder and all the other stuff, and it's going to make a beautiful, crispy batter for us. You can see the consistency. It's about pancake consistency, and that's what we're looking for. All right. So next, we've got our fish. How's our temperature? 323. We're good. All right. So I went with codfish. Any flaky white fish, you want to use shrimp, use anything you want, but a good codfish is a staple in fish and chips, IMO, in my opinion. Huh? See, I'm learning the young puck. All right. So like everything, we want to season along the way, right? So yes, we seasoned the flour, but we didn't, I mean the batter, but we didn't go crazy. So just a little bit of salt and pepper. So it's on the fish here is what we're looking for. Every bite wants to have a good flavor. Next we are, oh, I forgot one thing. We're going to dredge the fish in flour before we put it in the batter. Okay. So just a little bit of flour in a bowl. How are we doing temperature? Okay, we're doing good. All right, so a little bit of flour. Put the fish in there. Just dredge it, right? Cover it in there. Shake all the excess off. Dump it in your batter. I'm going to do two at a time on this one. Maybe three. No, we'll do two. You don't want to overcrowd your oil. That's the most important because, one, you're going to drop the temperature down very, very severely, and it's going to cause the batter not to uh, firm up and attach to the product that you're frying. So you just don't want to overdo it. Okay. So in the batter, we're at temperature. Get a nice coating on there, shake some of the excess off, but not too much. And always go away from you, right? So we're gonna go in the oil and away from us. This way it doesn't splatter on us, okay? This is gonna go probably about five to six minutes. Let me take this out. We don't need to measure the temperature right now. Oh. And take a look at that, Jake. Show that fish on the left. You see how it, it's all puffy and airy looking and crisped up really nice, you know, kind of form those bubbles around it really nicely? That's because of that carbonation combination, carbonation combination in the batter. So that's going to turn out really great. That's a, So we're going to fry a, that. I, I like carbonation combination. That's fun. Yeah, that does. Schoolhouse very rock. Rimey. Very schoolhouse rock. So just let it do its thing. Keep an eye on it. If, it's, if the oil is too, too hot, you know, cut it down a little bit. Um, in the initial, it's going to have that shock of the cold fish, but then it's going to come right back up to that temperature again. So just keep monitoring your oil temp. If it's too hot, too fast, you're going to get a lot of browning before the fish cooks. So you just want to be careful with that. All right. What did you say, Jake? It smells delicious. It smells delicious, yeah. All right. So just be careful. So you can hear that splatter. That's because a little bit of water got in there somewhere. Probably from my hand just washing it off. All right. So in the meantime, we're just going to prep up some lemon wedges. I think lemon always goes well with fish, fried fish especially, because we don't have really too much more to do on this. I honestly, I was going to make a uh, a uh, tartar sauce, but I don't have mayonnaise in the house. So no tartar sauce today. Sorry. But tartar sauce is very easy. It's just uh, mayonnaise, some pickles, cut them up. Oh, man, that looks really good. So you can see we're getting a nice golden batter. We're going to go about five to six minutes on this one. Um, and another thing I'm going to do. Just joined us. She said she tuned in late, so she wanted to double back and see what kind of fish you used. And it was cod, right? Yeah, I use codfish. You could use halibut, but uh, I like cod. Oops, stay there, Jake. And Sherry, the Any white is you can also oh, watch this again later on our Facebook page. Yeah, so any white flaky fish is really what uh, is going to be good. You know, I was, uh, while this fish was frying here, I was in the fridge earlier when I was looking for tartar sauce, and I had this cheese still left over, so I thought, why don't we make some, like, Parmesan basil french fries to go with it, you know? Oh, like, Pick it up a notch. Like a truffle fry? fry? I like yeah. it. Yeah. like yeah. it. So I'm just going to, and this is all you got to do. You just grate up some cheese. If you have the already grated, no problem. But the key when you're coming to it is you always want to season anything that you're frying once it comes out of the fryer. Even though you seasoned it already along the way, you just need a little bit of salt at the end because that's what's going to uh, really give you that good flavoring. It's that last chance while it's still hot, porous. 
you're going to be able to get the uh, seasoning inside the batter and make sure it's seasoned well. Don't overdo it, just enough, a little bit. All right, so the fish is going. Watch out, careful. A little bit of moisture was coming out there, which is okay. Just be careful. Let's uh, get some basil. Luckily, I have some fresh basil growing here. I bought one of those plants at the store. You can show them over here, Jake. I like those. Pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty handy. It's the same price as buying it in a little pouch, so why not buy that, water it, and it grows a little bit more along the way. That's pretty cool. So just some fresh basil. We're going to chop it up. Basil Parmesan pepper fries sound really good right now, so let's see what happens. And that's what's great about cooking is you just wing it, you know? I mean, you're like, oh, I've got this. Let me make it. And just add it. If you taste it, if you don't like it, you adjust for next time. All right, hang tight. Let me grab. You got to grab something to put. I'm just grabbing a bowl, sorry. Mise en place. Grab our bowl so we can do the fries. Come over here, Jake. All right, look at that fish. I mean, that that's coming good. along really nicely. Yeah. Good. And you can really tell the batter there. It's just a different type of batter with the way we made it versus like, you know, a breading of egg flour breadcrumb type where it's just kind of more dense and sticks to it. A little bit for, you know, this is a little airy and it's really, really nice. So let me grab a plate and we're going to put some paper towels on it. This way we can drain the fish. I'm going to pull it out. It looks good. It looks done. It's really more time and uh, temperature. That's all we're doing because you don't really want to cut this open if you don't have to. If you're unsure and you're just like, hey, you know what? I want to make sure I'm not serving raw fish. Cut it open. Be comfortable. But I've done this a few times, so I'm just going to pull it out. It wasn't that thick of a piece, and it was that close to room temperature, as well as the time and the temperature that we've got. So that looks amazing. What I'm going to do now real quick is I'm going to throw the other fries in that I did earlier, right? This way we can get these to cook up. Get those guys in there. All right, so nice hot oil. We're at 375 again. And these are going to take about two to three minutes. We're just looking for a nice golden brown color on them. They're already cooked and inside, so now we're just kind of crisping them up on the outside. So we've got – here. You can come up here. i got a bowl with oh, – let's have a little jig. I've got a bowl. I'm going to put the Parmesan cheese in here. I'm going to put the basil in here. And this is what we're going to put our fries on into. I'm going to go ahead for the sake of time right now, just put a little bit of salt. And again, this is professional level, everybody. Take it easy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what I'm going to do is I, I know how much salt I'm going to need for those fries based on what I got in there. So I'm just going to put a little bit in, not too much, instead of waiting. Uh, because you've got the cheese, right? The cheese is very salty, too. Salt and pepper. Uh, how about some garlic? Sounds like it'll work. A little bit of garlic. All right. So all we're waiting for right now is those fries to crisp up. This bowl, we're going to put them in here, shake them all around, and then we're going to plate it up, and we're pretty much done. So it's not hard to do. It's not a lot of ingredients. Just lift up a little bit. It seems fairly straightforward. I mean, especially it, if, it, if it's all getting, you know, prepped up in advance, and you've got all your, you know, your material, your ingredients right there, and your materials. I think it's a fairly easy dish. It looks like. Yeah. It really is. I mean, if you didn't want it or if you didn't have the time to do the potato the head, you can really just fry them, throw them in there. You're going to get a good crispy fry and as long as you eat it right away. Uh, you know, the fish, just having it defrosted and thawed and ready to go. The batter is only three or four ingredients. I mean, you could, we're going to get this done in about 30 minutes. And I really didn't prep too much ahead, um, mainly just the potatoes. And that's just because I wanted to show you guys a couple of different examples. So let's let these finish up. Let's give it another minute. We'll get a plate ready. And then we'll be almost done. Yeah, I mean, I like it because, again, you're showing everybody that you're not having to, um, you know, use a million different fancy things. You don't have a deep fryer out, you know. So, I mean, I really, I think it's great. And you're using the same oil. Or, or wait, no, that's too yeah. oil, right? 
It's just what? It's the same oil for both items, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The fish and the and the fries. So I mean, we could have done been done faster if I had two separate ones. But again, for sake of not wasting too much oil and product and taking up all the space, you just let it sit for a couple minutes because that fish is going to be piping hot anyway, and you want it to cool off so you can actually eat it. Yeah. But I mean, look at these potatoes here. They're beautifully golden brown. We're going to give it 30 more seconds, and then I'm tossing them because I can't wait. They look delicious. I'm going to grab some tongs so I don't burn my fingers. All right, Jake, you think they're ready? Yes. All right, Jacob says yes. So here we go. We're going to pull them out. Look at those golden brown fries. Nothing better than fresh cooked French fries. Dump them right into this bowl of goodies because we want that oil to kind of warm it all up and help stick everything to it. So drain them the best you can. All right. Give them a good zhuzh. Oh, you can smell that. And the, the heat is really going to, you know, warm that cheese up. It's going to start to get those oils to come out of the basil. And it's, oh, man, you smell that? That just hit right there. All right. So there we've got Parmesan basil fresh cut fries. Let me go grab the fish. Zoom out a little bit, Jake. We've got a beautiful piece of golden fish. And we've got fish and chips. Love I think it. we did it. That was awesome. That was really fast. I mean, you're at 22 minutes. Not too bad? Over here. Yeah. No. Not so, again, all. any questions, just ask. Um, you know, it. I sometimes I get it. I make it look a little easier than people think it is. But jump in there. It's not that hard. Be careful with the oil, you know, have it all ready to go. This way it's not so stressful. And that's why prepping ahead makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think like in all of my, you know, when I'm uh, cooking even, and I'm not, you know, by any means a, uh, a chef uh, for sure. But, uh, you know, my specialty is compound butter, for goodness sakes. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I do, I still like to have everything all prepped out and all the materials together. And I think when you do that, everything else becomes easier. Uh, for yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Enjoy. You're welcome. I'm totally jealous. Jacob, enjoy that birthday fish and chips. And yes, we're uh, going to enjoy some lunch. Excellent job. Good job, cameraman. All right. Basic gym. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.